Hello friends and fashion lovers, you're welcome back. Thank you for all your love, your support. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you're here for the first time, my name is Esther and I love to sew. Please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the future uploads. I know for those that knows me personally, I know that this tutorial is long overdue. So without further ado, let's get right into the making of this dress. So here I have six yards of organza fabric, two yards of satin fabric, a zipper, something to decorate the dress, and also my lining fabric. The measurement you need for this dress is on the screen. So I'm going to be drafting directly on my fabric. So I'm marking out one inch and this will serve as my zipper allowance at the back. Folding it over, I'm going to just secure it in place. So assuming you've looked at these measurements and you've taken them, you have them already. Let's get into drafting. So here is my guideline, which will serve as my shoulder line. I'm putting half the shoulder width measurement, which is 4.5 inches plus half inch seaming allowance. The neck width is 2.5 inches. So here, I've marked 2.5 inches. So the neck tip for the back is 1.5 inches. The measurements I'm using here is for a three to five year old. So for the front neck dip is 2.5 inches. The length of my bodice is nine inches. Then I have one inch for my seaming allowance. Half inch for the shoulder slope. Five inch for the ham hole. Next is to put quarter of the round chest measurement plus ease, which is 6.5 plus half inch seaming allowance. So I'm just going to connect everything. So now to the ham hole, I'm going to find the midpoint. I'm going to curve it from there. So the down part before cutting, I'm going to go up by half an inch. I'm going to go up by half an inch on the down part before cutting. I just like the way it sits. So next is to just cut according to all my measurements. So I'm cutting the, I first of all cut the back neck deep first, then now the front neck deep. So I'm going to use this as a pattern to cut my lining piece or my main fabric. I'm using the same fabric for both. So here I have two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back so for the skirt piece i just have a long a rectangular piece here so the length of the skirt is my dress length minus my bodice length so when you take out the bodice length from the dress length so that's the skirt length and I'm adding one inch seaming allowance to that. So with my skirt length out of the way, the width is two times the round chest measurement or the waist measurement. Then I'm going to add two inch, which is the zipper allowance. So that's the width. So it's two 
times the round west measurement. The width is two times the round west measurement plus two inches, which is a zip allowance. I'm going to use the same measurement and cut for my lining piece. So on my shell fabric, which is the organza, which I'll be using for the ruffles, I'm just marking seven inches. You can do six inches, but don't do less because you're going to be folding it in half. So giving it a snip and I'm tearing it along. That is how I cut my organza fabric. How do you cut yours? After cutting mine, just fold my strip in half and I'm giving it a zigzag stitch. If you have an overlocker, you can use it, but in case you don't, just give it a besting stitch. Then you can take it close to the flame so that the thread won't come off much later. It's just something to keep the thread in place so that it doesn't go crazy later. Moving on, my bodice, I'm placing them right sides together, the back and the front, both the main fabric and the lining, and I'm going to be sewing them at the shoulder. Just make sure that you're using your locator seaming allowance, after which you press open your shoulder seam. Yes. Do that for your main fabric and your lining piece. When you're done, make sure that you place right sides together, the main fabric and the lining. Pin them in place and sew the neckline, leaving the zipper allowance open and also sew the ham hole. So you sew the neckline, leaving the zipper allowance open, and you also sew the ham hole. So when you're done sewing the ham holes and the neckline, you can trim off the excess seaming allowance and you notch. Yes, it's important to notch because you want your neckline lying flat. After that, you tuck the back, pass it through the shoulder and pull it out to reveal your right side out. Just tuck your back through the shoulder, pass it out and your right side out is revealed. Moving on, just place them right sides together, main fabric to main fabric, lining to lining. Pin them in place or just secure them in place and take to your sewing machine and join your borders by the side. So here, I have my young boss coming to check on me. After which you press open the side seam. Just press open it. It just helps your side seam to lie flat. So do the same for the other side. When you're done, let's start with the drama. Your organza fabric here, I just made one side to be longer than the other. That's two strips. And I'm going to pleat it on my bodice. After pleating, I'm going to have some sort of band on top of it, but I don't want to use my main fabric as a band. So I'm going to be using this organza fabric as a band. So the measurement I have here is four inches by the west circumference. So four inches is going to be two inches when it's folded. 
So here I'm just going to quickly fold it in half and iron it. So to avoid it from getting burn, I'm going to just place a cotton fabric on it and just iron it nicely. So to my sewing machine, I am here just giving random pleats on that organza fabric and I'm sewing it to my bodice, placing it on my bodice. At this point, make sure that you don't exceed your allocated seaming allowance. For mine, it was half an inch seaming allowance. So I just made sure that I don't exceed that, but rather I can do less of that. So after pleating it, so I can now sew my band on top of it. So I just make sure that I secure my band on it. I'm going to take to my sewing machine now and I'm going to sew. So this is part of the drama. <laughs> After sewing, I'm just going to quickly hand stitch. You can just tack the longer part of the ruffle to your bodice. Just make sure that you concealed it, you tack it and use the other pleats to cover it nicely. So on my skirt part now, I'm marking one inch, which was my allocated zipper allowance. Remember that I added two inches. So just mark the one inch. So on the down part, I'm going to roll hem it. I left one inch as the seaming allowance for my skirt, so I'm using half inch for the down part. So after roll hemming it, I'm just going to draw my beautiful flower-like spiral shape. <laughs> it's a spiral shape for now, but it's going to be a ruffle flower letter. So I didn't use any precise measurements. Just make sure you don't have them far apart too much. At least one inch in between each line. Or should I say at most one inch in between. Don't make them too far apart. So on this lovely drawing done, you are going to be sewing your organza strips on it to form your ruffle flower. You can start from the outside. So here I'm just placing a support because you definitely be needing a support. You can just use pile of books and use something to cover that. You need a support. If you are not using a machine that has an extension or a tree or something, you will need the support. So just Conceal the raw edge by folding it once, fold it again, and take to your sewing machine and start sewing. So I found out that starting from the inside and working my way out was more comfortable for me. So you can find what is more comfortable for you because honestly speaking it will look like this when you're just starting but with time it's going to look like this so you need to know what works for you so starting from inside and working my way out was what i went for so at this point honestly the struggle was real. But it's seriously worth it.
when I got to a point, I wanted a circle in the middle, or should I say a flower, a big bouquet of flower or ruffle in the middle. So yeah, I'm marking one inch, which I had located for my seaming allowance. So I'm going to place right sides together. So on the upper part of this, my sketch, I'm going to mark three inches downward. This three inches will be where my zipper will stop from my bodice to the skirts. I'm going to sew close the remaining parts. So here I'm going to sew close what is left after I've taken out three inches from my skirt length. So now you can press open that seam, make sure it's flat. On the right side, I'm going to measure the length that I have there. Find the midpoint and start my spiral drawing. Yes, just keep going. So with this, I am going to go back and sew on it. So I make sure that I folded it once, folded it again, the raw edge concealed. Making sure that the raw edge is down, the edges are down. Then I just start sewing from the center outward. You can start from the outer inward, whatever works for you. So I know at this point you might ask, is it really necessary to draw the spiral shape and all that? Well, it might not be necessary for you, but for me, it was a huge guide because it helps me to know where to sew. You don't necessarily have to follow the line, but you just have to have something to look at, something to guide you. That's just my opinion. So, yes, at this point, the struggle is real. My advice is to go slow. Take your time. Don't try making this dress if you are in a hurry because it does take time, to be honest. And at the end of the day, I don't know if I should actually take credit for how this dress turned out or I shouldn't. But we'll get to that part. I'll tell you what happened later. So moving on from here, on my lining piece, I am going to pleat it and attach to the lining part of my bodice. Yes, I said pleat. And I'm going to hem, you can hem the down part, but honestly, I'm not worried about hemming yet. So I'm going to pleat it. So if you want it flat like I did, you can pleat. But if you don't want it flat, you want the extra volume, you can gather. But pleating it makes it like quite flat on the inside. So this is one of the small reveals. So this is how my skirt part looks when I was done. So to attach it to my bodice i will have to gather it remember that it was two times the waist measurement in case you want to find out if i could just have made an airline skirt with it no it's cuter that way because 
you can't overcrowd the spiral rows. So if you gather it, it just makes it a lot nicer and just makes it look good. So here I am placing my borders on my skirt right side facing. Starting from that my zipper opening. So making sure to adjust and get all the ruffles out of the way. While securing, make sure that the ruffles are down. That you are only securing your seaming allowance. So if you've successfully done that, well done. So after I'm securing everything in place, It took quite a while. Just step to your sewing machine and sew. Yes, take your time because you don't want to mess up all your good works at this point. So I just had to go a bit slow here. So at this point, I was excited and honestly speaking, I was getting really, really exhausted. So just ensure that no ruffles get sewn. So this is how it looks. It's a beauty, in my opinion, <laughs> as I always say. So next is to attach the zipper to it. And if you have unfinished lining that you didn't hem, you hem before you proceed to do the rest. So here, yeah, I just went ahead and attached the zipper. I didn't even frame it. And this is how it looks. So this is the last picture I took of this dress before it was hijacked. It's beautiful and I had to go to rest at this point. Hoping that by the time I'm up, I'm going to just give it a nice finishing touching. But guess what? I woke up to this. And I have a five-year-old telling me that he made the dress. Should I be excited or sad? <laughs> Let me know. Thank you for watching. So if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. Love you guys and see you in the next tutorial. Stay safe. Bye for now.